Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at NECA's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder, based on the Mirage comics. This is a special variant, part of a Loot Crate exclusive deal where you can get three different Loot Crates that have a figure in them. And I believe if you get all three, there's like a fourth one somehow. I don't, I'm not exactly sure on how that all works. I'm not into the Loot Crate thing anymore, but NECA sent me this so that I could review it for you guys, so you could decide if you want to pick it up. And I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the option for getting the actual Loot Crate is no longer available. You'd have to go third party like eBay or something, but this is just so that you guys can see what it looks like. And maybe you missed the Loot Crate too, and you want to track it down. This will give you the information you need to decide if you want to do that. I personally love this figure. It looks really, really cool. I'm um, just not into the whole Loot Crate thing, so I didn't uh, didn't sign up for it. Kind of wish I had now, because this thing's awesome. Anyway, um, there's not a whole lot to talk about because it's mostly just a repaint, but we're still going to go over it. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 17 and a half centimeters, which makes him pretty close to, let's say, six and seven eighths inches. He's got a little bit of height to him. That's pretty cool. And for those of you that do keep things like this in the package, this package is awesome. It's so cool because it's just your basic black like window box type thing, but the lettering is all basically chrome. It's so sharp looking, no pun intended. Okay, I intended it a little bit. There's the artwork there. That looks pretty spiffy. It doesn't actually glow blue. That's... Uh, that's from my shirt. I happen to be wearing a blue shirt and it looks like it's making that would be cool if they could figure out that kind of effect Anyway, it's just a really cool package The only downside really is that he's fairly purple on the package and then he's very blue on here uh, I don't know about that, but the otherwise don't look at the back the package is really cool and he looks awesome in it So if you are that kind of person, I just wanted to throw that out there I don't normally cover packaging, but that one looked pretty spiffy. Okay, so as far as the aesthetic goes, it's essentially the same sculpt as before. We've seen this body before, but now it's in solid blue with silver armor and black paint. And it is awesome. It looks so good. They nailed it. They got that styling down so well. I absolutely love this from an aesthetic standpoint. I don't think they could have done much better. Except I have a little red dot right there. You see that? So that could be better, <laughs> but that kind of thing just happened. So that's fine. But yeah, they really nailed the styling. The paints continue all the way through on the back. Very pleased with that. Maybe the helmet could use a little bit more, but who's looking at the back that much? I doubt too many people. Although, if you are looking at the back, you may notice that the uh, things on the helmet... Now this one's grued. grued. <laughs> it's glued, just a little bit crooked. But even if it was straight, this one on this side is longer than this one. It's a little funny looking back there, so that does bug me. But if you don't look at it from the back, you won't be able to tell. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. But otherwise, it is just awesome. The silver is a kind of like a flat metallic. The blue is obviously fairly saturated. And then the black is perfectly opaque. Very nice looking figure. So aesthetically speaking, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It could have gotten a 10 if it didn't have the weird issue with the helmet being the way it is. As far as accessories go, we have the two fist hands that come on in the package. Two gripping hands. We have a long bow and an arrow. The arrow actually does have the um, little groove in it so you can't, what's it called, knocking a bow? I believe, knocking an arrow, I mean. I, you, it doesn't really work, but it's there. It's a really nice detail. The reason it doesn't work is the rope's a little bit thick, but the bow itself is actually fairly functional. I'll just show you. I mean, I don't think you're going to be shooting anybody with this thing, but it actually... Now, also, do this do this uh, under adult supervision, and uh, I'm not recommending you play with it like this because you could break it or snap the rope or whatever, but it does technically function, and I'm not going to pull any more than that, but... That's pretty cool. I like that. And then the arrow, again, you can't really get that in there, but it's still a nicely done arrow. So that's cool. And then we get the uh, little chained Kama or uh, Kusara Gama, which is a nice accessory. The chain is plastic, which I think is fine. I don't think we need real chain. That's usually too heavy. And frankly, I'd be okay with a sculpted version so that you don't just have a loose chain. But they did do a really nice job with this. The paint job is stylized and the silver is nice and shiny. So that's awesome. Decent batch of accessories, though, fairly basic i'll give it an eight it's still pretty cool nothing crazy but it's it is what it should be so that is fine now as far as articulation goes this guy is the exact same as before lots of the joints are stuck on this one uh, i tried to free them up i didn't have much luck and i don't want to screw with it too much because i don't want to risk damaging it 
but uh, I'll try to go over it anyway for you guys so you can see what's up. So for the head, you have a ball peg at the bottom and then a straight peg at the top. The straight peg, it gives you the swivel, obviously, and it's easier to assemble than having another ball peg, but having a ball peg on the top here would definitely give better range, that's for sure. And for the neck, I think it's a ball peg. I thought it was a hinge before, but yeah, it is a hinge. Okay, it was just hidden. I, I was like, maybe they changed it, maybe not. Okay, but it is a hinge, so it'll swivel, and then there's a hinge in there. It's very, uh, I shouldn't say very, it's relatively limited based on the fact that it's seated inside that. So I'll just kind of put it where you want it, and then you are good to go with that. And the head will rotate around, and it does have that ball peg, which does give plenty of range, don't get me wrong. They did a good job with that bottom ball peg. It's just, the second ball peg at the top is good for adjustment for posing, but that's perfectly fine. Shoulder pads are still soft and they're still connected to the body so they don't move with the arms. It's not a huge deal because of the way they're angled. It's not going to be a terrible problem unless you try to raise the arms up all the way and then of course you can't do that. Um, also they're very stiff and I can't get that one to go up any higher than that. This one doesn't want to either. I'm sure they can but that is the way it comes in the package. You do have a bicep swivel right there. Double jointed elbow. A little bit better than 90 but not by a whole lot. Wrist, swivel, and hinge, that's pretty much standard. For the torso, just get a waist twist. Nothing crazy. It would have been nice to get an ab crunch in there, obviously. I probably mentioned that in previous reviews for this mold. Uh, he can't actually, where's the box? He can't actually do this pose, which is a little bit unfortunate. My shirt's ruining, there you go, you can see it there. You can't actually get him to hunch over that much unless you just do it at the hips. And then bringing his arms forward don't doesn't really work either. So it's a little bit disappointing, but obviously you're still gonna look cool in whatever pose you do choose to use. So for the hips, we have the standard ball hinge. Hips, you can get them out pretty much all the way to the side. They do have splits, or well, <laughs> splits and splits in his tunic thingy. So you should, you should get the legs out pretty far. Going forward, we do have a little bit of looseness. Again, it's the exact same mold as before. They're not floppy, but they are, floppy adjacent they're very close as soon as you give them a reason to move they're gonna flop you do have a thigh swivel in there and you can bring them up pretty far but again be aware that we do have some flop in there double jointed knees are double jointed and then there's supposed to be a swivel right here I can't get that one to move or this one it should work but that's the kind of thing where if you don't do it just right you're probably gonna shear it off so if yours is stuck like that be very careful you'll want to try heating and maybe cooling and never twist something that's already heated it'll just tear right off and be very careful once it's cool also you really have to finesse it if you're trying to fix a stuck joint for the ankles you just have a ball peg with some range nothing crazy just enough to basically put him in a pose uh, to adjust his feet so that he can stand while in a basic pose is what i should say and then we do have a toe hinge which is actually a really really nice toe hinge so yeah, once again, NECA is definitely leaning into the aesthetic over the articulation. While it's technically there, you're probably going to be somewhat limited compared to other figures. I personally think it's enough, and obviously that's just the choice they made, so you have to decide if that works for you. For me, it's fine. I love the aesthetic, and I don't need every figure to be doing a flying kick with the splits while rubbing his stomach and scratching his ass at the same time. I think it's fine to put him in a basic pose, and that'll be okay for me. You can decide for yourself. For articulation, I'm going to give it... I'll give it a 7, it's still not bad. Uh, once you get the joints unstuck, you should be fine. If you have stuck joints, that could be completely random. You know, people don't often consider things like this, but if you live in a hot climate or a cold climate, the temperature changes that the figure goes through while in transit affects things like the joints getting stuck and things like that. So it could be totally different for somebody in Alaska and somebody in Tempe, Arizona. You never know. So I just have to show you what I have and hopefully you can use that information to make decisions for yourself. So final verdict on this guy. If you are still able to get the loot crate, I don't know, um, go for it, I guess. It's pretty cool. If you can't, then you have to track it down on eBay and hopefully they don't cost a fortune. But I would recommend it. If you're into turtles, especially the earlier turtles, the Mirage Comics turtles, this is going to be a really cool addition to your collection. It's going to stand out on a shelf. And they did a pretty good job. So I'm going to give it an overall rating of 8. Articulation is definitely a little bit of an issue. But otherwise, it's a solid release. So uh, there you go. You guys can let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the video by giving it a thumbs up. Or a thumbs down if you're so inclined. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos out just about every single day. And thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.